Hello everyone. In this session, we will introduce the cost volume analysis method through some examples. Well, break even point, which is a very important cost volume analysis concept. And actually, break even point is a special case of the cost volume analysis. So cost volume analysis basically is based on the relationship or the finance 101 definition of profit, total revenue, and total cost. So we all know profit equals to revenue minus cost, and total revenue is the number of units we sell or the quantity times the revenue per unit. Well, total cost includes fixed cost and a variable cost. Variable cost can be calculated as the quantity times the variable cost per unit. So this is the basic equations or basic relationship we use to do the cost volume analysis. As we mentioned, break-even point is a special case of the cost volume analysis. When we see break-even, we see we do not make money, we do not lose money because the revenue just equals the cost, which means profit equals to total revenue minus total cost equals to zero. When we substitute the definition of the total revenue, we know it means total revenue R times Q equals to total cost, which is fixed cost FC plus the variable cost V times Q. And we can do some basic algebra transformation and get the calculation or the definition of the break-even point equals to fixed cost divided by the difference between revenue per unit minus the variable cost per unit. So this is how we derive or how we get the break-even point calculation equation. Now let's take a look at some examples. The first one. The owner of old-fashioned berry pies, S. Simon, is contempting to add a new line of pie, which will require leasing new equipment for a monthly payment of 6000 The variable cost will be $2 per pie, and the pie can be sold for $7 each. First question, how many pies must be sold in order to break even? Now, this is a break-even point question because we try to find the volume that makes us break-even. So we have the fixed cost, which is a monthly rental cost or the leasing cost equals to 6000 We have the corresponding variable cost, $2 per pie, and the revenue or the sales price, $7 per unit or per pie. Now, with all this information, fixed cost, unit revenue, unit cost, we can calculate the break-even point. The break-even point equals to fixed cost divided by unit revenue minus unit variable cost. We can find the break-even point equals to 1,200, which means to break even, we need to sell 1,200 pies per month. Remember, this fixed cost is per month, so it is not annual fixed cost. So the break-even point is for per month. Second part, what would be the profit or loss if only 1,000 pies are made and sold in a month? Now first, if you remember from part A, we know the break-even point is 1,200 pies. Now, if we can only sell 1,000 pies, this number 1,000 is smaller than the break-even point 1,200. Well, at the break-even point 1,200 unit or 1,200 pies per month, we can only break even. We do not make money. And any quantity that is lower than this break-even point should generate a loss instead of profit, which means for 
this question, if we only produce 1,000 pies, we will sure lose money. Let's see if this is the case. Now, profit equals to revenue minus cost. Cost includes fixed cost and variable cost. We have given information, revenue $7 per pie, that's the sales price. Variable cost, $2 per pie. Fixed cost, 6000 that's a leasing amount per month. And uh, the production quantity for this part is 1000 We substitute everything into the formula to calculate the profit. We can see the profit is negative 1000 which means if we only sell 1,000 pies per month, then we will lose $1,000 per month. We're not making any money. Part C. How many pies must be sold to realize a profit of 4,000? Similarly, take a look at the equation here. But now it's a little bit different. We have an expected profit. That's a profit we want to achieve. But we do not know how many quantity we should sell to, to achieve this profit. But as we learn from the, I think this is the middle school, yeah, middle school mathematics. For such an equation, if all variables except one is unknown, we can just solve this equation to find this unknown value. Now for this equation, we have profit, that's expected profit given 4,000. We know the unit revenue, we know the fixed cost, we know the variable cost. The only thing that is unknown is the quantity, that is what we try to solve. So if we change the formation a little bit, we can make it more clear, because we have only five variables here, profit, unit revenue, unit variable cost, quantity and a fixed cost and we know four of them and we can solve this equation to find the value of the unknown variable now basic algebra knowledge can lead us to the solution so the expected quantity is 2000 so if we can make and sell 2000 units per month it can generate $4,000 profit. Part D. If 2000 can be sold and the profit target is $5,000, what price should be charged per pie? Now here it changed a little bit from previous questions. But again, still, we know the profit, which is 5000 We know the variable cost, $2. We know the production quantity, 2000 We know the fixed cost, $6,000. The only thing unknown is the revenue. And of course, with basic algebra knowledge, we can solve this equation and get the revenue as $7.5. So we need to sell each pie at a price of $7.5 to achieve $5,000 dollar profit with a production quantity of 2000 Now here I want to emphasize, in this example, it's, it's very simple or straightforward. The only thing that is used is the basic algebra knowledge. If you do have difficulty to solve these problems, you really need to enhance your basic mathematical or algebra skills. Next example, a manager has the option of purchasing one, two, or three machines. The fixed cost are poten and potential volumes are given. So we have number of machines, one, two, three, and the corresponding fixed cost. It can be considered as the price we pay for the machine and the related installation and the facility cost. Well, with one machine we can produce 300 unit. Of course, two machine it will be 600 unit, and three machine can produce up to 900 unit. 
The variable cost is $10 per unit, and the revenue is $40 per unit. So we produce one at one $10 per unit and sell it at $40 per unit. Determine the break-even point for each range. Basically, it means if we have one machine, two machines, or three machines, well, what will be the corresponding break-even point? Now, determining the break-even point for each range, break-even point is defined as fixed cost divided by revenue minus variable cost. So for machine one, we have break-even point at 320. Two machines, the break-even point would be 500 units. Three machines, the break-even point would be 666.67. So if we produce 666, unit we will lose money if we produce 667 unit we can make some make some money from the production now here it means it tells us what what do i want you to pay attention is for the first number so for one machine the break even point is 320 unit but if you remember the production range for one machine is only up to 300 units. So with one machine, you can never produce more than 300 units. But to break even with only one machine, you need to produce 320 units. Well, it means if we only install one machine, you will always lose money because, because you cannot reach this break even point. Well, another part is we see the fixed cost. One machine is 9,600. Two machine is 1,500. So from one machine to two machine, it only increased 5,400. And from the second machine to third machine, it only include, increased 5,000. This is an example to show the economies of scale. So when we improve or increase the number of machines, actually, the average fixed cost for each machine actually will reduce. Last example. A firm's manager must decide whether to make or buy a certain item used in the production of vending machines. Making the item would involve annual lease cost of $150,000. Cost and volume estimates are as follows. If we make, the annual fixed cost will be $150. That's the lease cost. Variable cost will be $60. And annual volume will be $12,000. If we buy, then there won't be any fixed cost. But the variable cost increased from $60 per unit to $60 per unit. And annual volume is same. Now, this is example to show how to use the cost volume analysis to evaluate the financial performance of different alternatives. Here, the two alternatives are make, make by yourself, or buy from outside. Now, given these numbers, should the firm buy or make this item? Now, how do we evaluate it? We have only the cost information, fixed cost and the variable cost. We do not need we do not need to consider the profit or compare profit because for both of these two conditions or scenarios, the volume are the same, which means the revenue will be the same. When we make comparison, we only need to pick the one that has the lower cost, because the lower cost means the higher profit if the revenue is the same. So basically what we need to do is to calculate the total cost for the two alternatives. What will be the total cost if we make it? And what is the total cost if we buy it? And see which one gave us the smaller total cost. Now to make it, we have fixed cost of 150,000. Variable cost, 
sixty dollar times the quantity twelve thousand, which gave us a total cost of make equals to eight hundred and seventy thousand dollar. Similarly, we calculated the total cost of buy. The variable cost is eighty dollar per unit, and the total unit is twelve thousand. So the total cost of buy will be nine hundred and sixty thousand dollar. So compare the two, of course, make should be the choice because the total cost is ninety thousand dollar lower, which means if we make, we can generate ninety thousand dollar more profit. There is a possibility that the volume could change in future. At what volume would the manager be indifferentiated between making and buying? So what does it mean by say there is no difference there is no difference between making and buying? It means making and buying will give us or will generate the same profit. In another word, it means at what volume that the total cost of making and buying are the same. We have the total cost of make equals to the fixed cost hundred hundred fifty thousand dollar plus sixty dollar times the quantity. Or depend on how many unit one will want to produce. And for the buy the total cost is just the eighty dollar per unit times the quantity. Now here the first part is the total cost of make given the production quantity Q. Second part is the total cost of buying given the total quantity of Q. Well, the question asks us the volume that will be indifferentiate the two costs, which means these two costs equal to each other. And next step will show that how we calculate it and the quantity will be 7,500. So if we produce 7,500 units, then there will be no difference between these two options.